Hello everyone and welcome to week seven of year two of the Religious Education Initiative. This is day one. We're reading the book of Genesis. So last week we saw God command Noah to build the ark and to prepare for the coming flood which would judge corrupt humanity and cleanse the earth of the taint that had come upon it through human sinfulness. We also saw God promise to keep Noah and his family alive along with a remnant of all the animals of the earth, and to make his covenant with them. And we saw that what God was planning with them was to remove them from the corrupted earth, to cleanse the earth, and to begin again with faithful people, that is, with Noah and his family. We should note that we see Noah first when he is 500 years old, when God tells him to begin to build the ark. Today, 100 years later, we will see the flood arrive. This is Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive upon the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and everything that lives that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood, of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah, as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark, they and every beast according to its kind, and all the cattle according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every bird of every sort. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life, and they that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily upon the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, birds, cattle, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm up on the earth, and every man, everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life, died. He blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. Now, it's easy to get distracted by the details that are given here because we get a lot of details. We get exact dates. We get how deep the water was between the tops of the mountains and the bottom of the ark. We get how long the water stayed on the earth and how long it rained. All of this is good to pay attention to, but it's not helpful to obsess over it. The story is handed down with these details because it is a memory of the people of God, of the faithful who were brought through water out of an evil civilization, out of an evil 
an evil and broken and corrupt earth into the new world that the Lord creates. But the point of the story is not that we fixate on the details and question how this could possibly have happened. It's not that kind of story. The point of this is that we understand what is happening and why. We like to think that we have a right to exist. But what we see here is that our existence is a gift of God that he gives to us. And he gives it to us to exercise it in communion with him, in love for one another, in service and care and stewardship of the earth that has been given into our care. And what we see in this passage is what happens to humanity, what God does to humanity here at this time long ago, when humanity had rebelled against this calling, had turned to abusing and exploiting the earth, to abusing and exploiting one another, to abusing and exploiting the very existence and life they had been given, turning the gift of God into a weapon to use against God and his purposes for salvation and peace and love in the world. We see God set a time when judgment will come and give a warning. And a warning is always an invitation. It's God saying, if you do not change, then you will be cut off not because God wants to cut us off and punish us, but because he wants us to repent and lay aside the sins that are destroying us and the world around us and return to communion with him. So in this passage, we see the long patience of God and we see an important uh, first uh, example of something. And I'm talking about the 40 days that it rains. The 40 days that the earth is cleansed by flowing, running, falling water. Because we see 40 all the time in the scripture. But it's always talked about, uh, well, well, I shouldn't say it's always talked about. It's talked about in different contexts. We see 40 with the children of Israel uh, in the wilderness, but that's 40 years. We see Moses up on the mountain for 40 days. We see Jesus out in the wilderness fasting and being tempted for 40 days. And in the life of the church, twice a year, we do a 40-day fast. And I think this 40 days of the flood and the 40 days of the fast are connected because the flood is given to purify and to cleanse the earth, to bring it back into communion with God, to undo the brokenness of human sin. And the fast is intended to accomplish the same thing with our bodies and our minds and our hearts, to cleanse them of the filth of this world uh, by setting aside even the good, rich things of this world and turning our attention to God. Uh, and in that course of those 40 days, we turn away from the world and we turn towards the Lord and the soil of our hearts, the earth of our existence, if you will, uh, lays aside corruption and is restored to purity. So this is one idea that we might see here. There are a lot of others, but for now, uh, let's call that good. I'll see you all for day two. God bless you.